if you've been with me and this channel from the beginning, you have been able to witness my awakenings and transformations on every level. I promised you all to be honest, raw, and authentic on this podcast so that between you and I, we can develop a sense of trust so that if nowhere else in the world, you know that you can come here and experience something real. I think I wanted to start a platform because I was honestly tired of all the BS I was being sold. Nothing that I saw really identified with the way that I felt inside. So it truly is an honor and it is my responsibility to speak from an authentic space that is a representation of my life and the journey that I'm on now. So that if you are here and you are in the same place that I'm at now, you feel supported. Or when you reach this place in your journey to be a content creator or to host a podcast or whatever, wherever, you will have a sister that has already been there to pull you forward. Today, I want to talk about the concept of worthiness and self-worth. How defining your worth is vital to reprogramming the subconscious mind as well as creating and being an entrepreneur. I want to talk about ways we can honor our worth to live in the life of our dreams in hopes that with this video, I can allow you to see the choices that you've made and the ways that you've acted on your own worth in different ways and maybe more for the better. Welcome to the Rana Half Podcast, where we get real and then some. I'm your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will discuss different topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So, let's get started. Growing up as a black American, I can say that there are things about worthiness and self-worth that I am still unlearning and healing from because of the institution of slavery in America. When I think about my worth, I automatically equate that to my laboring skills and expertise. It's normal for me to view my self-worth and the worth of others by how well they can work and produce. Now, as I've gotten older... And with more experience of life, I realized that those ideologies didn't exist anywhere outside of me. People put different or more expectations on me because I was a person of color, because it was required of me to be considered in certain spaces, and most importantly, because I allowed it. I thought it made me a prize or it made me irreplaceable. I developed a sense of worth, honoring a metric system that was never meant to empower me, but to enslave me, and keep me enslaved in spirit and in mind by pushing the finish line further and further back the closer I got to it. When you are a person of color, existing in spaces where there are few to none, you're only there because of your mass production and skill. So when I saw others doing less and being praised or given a leniency or positions of authority that I could never have, I realized they were existing at a frequency that this life never wanted me to have or experience. The realization of this made me furious. And instead of acting on my rage by harboring resentment and working 10 times harder to prove more and more that I was and am worthy, this time I decided to sit still. I decided to do nothing and even less than that until I could finally define my worthiness with my own morals and future in mind. I bring up American history because as much as people like to use the number of years to separate themselves from our dark past, all of those events have left a sore on our culture, the people, and the ways that we have lived. And if you and your family have not been affected by those sores and decision makings, consider yourself privileged and sit in the silence of that blessing. Your experience holds no value to this conversation, and that's okay. Moving on. This work, unpacking your foundation of worth, 
is extremely important for every individual, especially entrepreneurs, especially people that are creators that are looking to use their creative abilities to get into a business for themselves. Because when you have the responsibility of setting your price, it's hard to do without a real sense of your own worth. How are you defining a metric system to scale your worth by? Is it the amount of sales you've produced in the past? Is it the feedback of your clients? Is it the knowledge gained by the years you have experience? Is it just pure passion and talent? Whatever it may be, are you able to have a confidence in the value of what you carry without fighting to convince yourself and others? You will know that you are mentally in the frequency of believing your worth when you can communicate your value without feeling the energy of convincing or pleading. People want to make sure that they're investing in something that's going to work for them and not feel like they're being had. How can you fully express the quality of your service with genuine belief that it is something worth having if you are not able to believe it firsthand? When you are establishing yourself as a business or setting your price, if you are not confident about it, people can sense that. There are people, especially people that are investing, that are very intuitive about making a decision on who they should invest in, and they can sniff out a lack of confidence right away. So it's your job uh, as a person to be taken serious, to take yourself seriously enough to believe in what you have. And I think confidence is so very important in anything that you do because of that. Here's an example that showed up in my life that really stuck with me about this topic of worth and worthiness. I was speaking to someone I love that is starting a business and the development stage is a challenge and that's normal. But because there are so many things you have to prepare so that your clients are making a good investment on your product, I shared a tip about something that I was using because I too am developing a product. And when we started to discuss pricing, I was told, hmm, maybe you should look around and make sure that you're not going too high. I immediately saw this as a projection. And I could be wrong, right? But a person who is in a season of second guessing or struggles to define their own worth will always expose themselves by the way another person chooses to define their own worth. If it's too low, they can handle it. But when the number is something outside of their own personal construct, the discomfort with their own choices doesn't know how to manifest itself inside, so it spews out. It projects fear, lack of confidence, confusion, and hopes to reel you into the dimension of their mind. Basically bringing you down to the worth that only they can conceptualize. I'm here to tell you, when you are in the development stage of something or a brand or a business, that is when you are the most susceptible to outside voices and fears. The voices you hear and the things said will almost convince you that it is your own. And I am here to reassure you that it is not. And it is not okay to allow someone else's fears to manifest into your plans. This is why defining your own values and your worth are so important. So that in the developmental stage, you are able to open yourself to construct feedback that uplifts and brings knowledge with the discernment to dismiss fear. Never allow anyone else to define your worth. I would hate for something or someone to talk you out of God's abundance for your life just because they can't conceptualize it for their own. Whether you work a 9-to-5, part-time, or as an entrepreneur, see yourself as someone more than someone who works to live. Lead in your life by establishing boundaries instead of allowing yourself to be too open and available for your life to be led in a direction that is completely outside of your primary objective. What is your primary objective? Is it to make money by your creative talents? To have more time spent with family? To travel? Anything that you choose requires a level of curation. And in order to create what we want outside of thinking about the sacrifices... Think about the boundaries that must be set in your life in order to have those things. And this is the hard part. 
because maybe having a good work-life balance means that you're no longer employee of the month. Maybe existing in your creativity to view it as a business does not make you a present daughter or friend of the year. And are you willing to be in the discomfort of that? I just spoke about the ways I established my values as a hard worker. When I was doing that, everyone loved what I did. But it was hard spending time alone with myself because I wasn't giving myself enough time to actually invest in what I wanted. When I was available to everyone else, I was completely unavailable to myself. And that was unsustainable for me. I realized I was giving myself a small pocket of time to be an individual and honoring my worth meant I needed more time spent with myself to give it the time and energy that it needed. Also, I realized when I wasn't just doing everything for everyone and saving the day all of the time, nothing exploded. People were still able to function. Everything was okay. I didn't have to put out all of these fires to make myself worthy or valuable. I realized that being an amazing and dependable employee for someone else's business was not the best version of myself. It was unsustainable, and I needed to make a different choice. Yes, most of us have to work to make a living, but we also have to live. We are humans, and if I'm working, but I am not living in my truth— I have to be brave enough to acknowledge it and say that it doesn't work anymore and move on. Sometimes we allow ourselves to sit in the discomfort of the lives we choose so long that we convince ourselves that it's just how life is or that it's someone else's fault and it's not true. That's the victimhood. And it's another reason why the institution of slavery was such a detriment to the psyche. It did something to our spirit. And I truly feel like the people who watch my videos are leaders. That's why my videos resonate so much. You know, we just get it. We have free thoughts. We are our own men and women. And when you exist with a strong moral compass and move in ways that most don't understand, that most get uncomfortable by because it it is in a way that honors our worth, our values, and the future version of ourselves, it can be very lonely. So yes, if you haven't found your primary objective... Do it, even if it's just for six months. Say for the next six months, I will curate a schedule that allows me to enjoy my weekends more. I'm having a conversation with my employer about establishing a boundary so that they don't call me while I'm on my weekends with my children. I'm making sure that I use my weekends to develop my business or a craft or doing things that actually make me feel more like myself instead of just partying on the weekends. Or on this day, I meet up with a group of people that are investing into this hobby. I really want to incorporate this into my lifestyle and I just want to see where it takes me. And let life happen to you in that way. And this is something very interesting that I've noticed for myself and as well as others. When you are fresh out of school, out of university, your master's program, and you've gone through the course of education, you for a very long time, for several years, are existing in, you know, the mindset of a student. And that only takes you so far. What I mean is once you leave the university and the assignment and you know, that lifestyle existing in the freedom of being an adult and being responsible for yourself, for your life, it is another journey because now without something being due in several weeks, how are you going to manage your time? Who are you outside of your assignments? Who are you after you receive this accolade of the work that you've done for several years and so many people struggle with curating schedules that actually embody who they are, how they want to show up in the world. 
you know, and I see it all the time when I speak to someone that's younger than me and they're going the route of education, which is great, but they're not really comfortable with experiencing life because they're so used to the structure of school and class and assignments and things being due outside of that, they're not really sure how to operate. And so when I talk about a primary objective, it's something outside of your accomplishments. It's something outside of the things that you've learned and gained. How do you want to live your life? How do you want to wake up every day and feel? What do you want to make accessible to you on a day-to-day? See it. Believe that you can have it and develop a system that will bring you into that direction because what is heartbreaking to me that I see because I see a lot of working professionals that are married, children, divorced, whatever... They feel like the choices that they've made have created a cage for them. Well, because I have this and my husband does that, I'm not able to do X, Y, Z. Well, my children are doing this and da, 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 so I cannot do X, Y, Z. Especially for women, it's so easy for us to put things over ourselves We give so many people the ability to curate this life for us because of, you know, the job as a woman to be a mother, a wife, you know, a partner, whatever, that we create these cages for ourselves and we try to find little pockets of time for freedom or to really be our one true self. But if you choose it from the very beginning, you'll create a life that you won't have to escape from start with yourself first start with you know what you actually want first and give that to yourself first so that way when other things add to your life like the marriage and the children and all of the things that make life really really special you can still keep those special things about yourself you know and you know when I make these episodes and I make these messages It's very hard for me to talk about the topic of romantic relationships. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't like to delve into those things because it seems inauthentic to me. Because you can listen to every video about what a person should do with their femininity, their masculinity, their relationship, and all of those things. But at the end of the day, you're going to do what you want to do. You're going to do what you're going to do. No one has the ability to change you, your mind. You're going to change when you're ready. You're going to leave when you're ready. You're going to do what you need to do. And no one has the power over your decisions to change the way that you feel about your relationship and what you choose to do, you know. What I will say, though, is if we tap into the relationship that we have with ourselves, automatically it's going to manifest in the relationships around us. So in the topic of worthiness, I think a lot of the times I used to feel or what I've seen other people feel is that their worthiness was defined by how another person decided to treat them. And growing up from Houston, which is literally trick culture and by trick I mean um, someone who is willing to financially invest their assets and resources into you you know as a person it's for a very long time I feel like women define their worth by a man's ability to care for her and you know I love the sprinkle sprinkle lady But when I found out that she was a Houston native, it made a lot of sense to me because it's in the culture of how women are treated and how women are kept in that place. And it changed the way that I view relationship. It changed the standards that I set on my relationship just as a woman being in the South, being from Houston and knowing what men are capable of doing, right? The reason why it felt like a danger to me for my mental health, and this is only speaking for myself, it was when I realized that a 
person or a man was not able to do what I required, I took that on as my responsibility that it was my fault that he could not do for me. I buried the weight of his inabilities on my worth as a woman and how I kept myself. And that is, although it, it sounds, you don't realize you're doing it, it sounds very limiting as a woman. It sounds very limiting as someone who, I mean, I like to see myself as a spiritual woman. I feel in connection to the divine and I don't feel like it is of me to base my worth on something like that. And truly, you know, what good is a man to a woman that's led by God? I can't see my relationships in that way. And when I did, I had to learn a lot because of those mistakes and it never served me. If you're a man, if you're a woman, a person's inability to see your worth, treat you the way that you deserve to be treated as a human being, is not a representation of your value. It has everything to do with their life experiences, who they are as a person, and how they choose to love. But what does define your worth is how long you stay in it and how long you suffer through it. And by staying around, you make it okay. Especially for someone like me, I was someone that feared abandonment so much that I held on to these poisonous things because letting go, to me, meant that I was being like everyone that decided to let me go. I'm, it was like something wrong or I didn't want anyone to feel abandonment so I chose not to abandon and it left me in very unsafe situations for my mental health and I'm just now at 29 finding different ways to love and to detach and to still be this loving version of myself but no not everybody can be with me and everybody can't come with me and I can't just be with any or everyone but yeah when it comes to you know your worth and setting your price and establishing your worth as a business person as an entrepreneur as an employee as someone in a relationship you set the tone by the relationship that you have with yourself how you feel about yourself will allow others to see you in that way it comes with confidence and it comes with a lot of work especially if you're a person of color I didn't realize that I had to do all of this work until there was work that I had to do to take myself seriously as a creative entrepreneur and I realized hmm why do I start to scratch myself when I'm trying to figure out my price? Why, like, why is this, why are these things making me uncomfortable? And when I started to look back and I started to feel things that I couldn't see that were maybe a product of my ancestors' experience that I just, I wasn't alive to experience, but obviously I suffered the remnants of, I knew that it was something really really deep and something worthy of having a conversation about so that's just some little things about me you know outside of the luxury approach to worthiness you know not everybody wants luxury you know what I'm saying it's not everyone wants this aesthetic type of lifestyle that people see on social media some people just want to live comfortably to explore the planet and do things that they want to do some people see luxury as waking up and making their own cup of coffee or waking up and having their children you know able to experience life you know with the freedom that they never had and everyone has different definitions of what they want their life to be of how they want to experience life and just your ability to say you want it 
to work for it, to have it, is a luxury within itself. And you are worthy of that. I want you to feel that. Also, to be fair, the discomfort that I had with the things that I thought I was worthy of was only pushing it further away. It was a performative worthiness that I had that was not able to get me closer to my manifestations. Remember to set your price and only move it if it's going up. When you're talking numbers with yourself, honor it, believe it, feel it. Take a real good look at yourself and understand that the value that you bring into this life. You are only going to be as big as you allow yourself to be. Your worth is no one else's job to set but your own. If you have any questions about monetizing off of your social media platforms, if you are looking to scale your platform so that you can monetize off of your creative gifts and your abilities, have a chat with me. I would love to share all of the knowledge that I have experienced within the year of creating on YouTube. If you're wanting to dive into your purpose and need help navigating how you can make living in your purpose a reality, when I decided to live in my purpose and use my voice, it took a lot of strategy. I truly feel like it is my purpose to help people and share my knowledge and I want to do that with you. So if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with me, the link is in the description below. I hope to see you guys there.